The Flowers of Robert Maplethorpe was a video game released in 1992 that contained an interactive collection of the pictures photographer Robert Maplethorpe took of flowers presumably from the start of his career in the late 60s or early 70s to his untimely death in 1989. He was known best for his black and white photographs, with much of his work featuring an array of subjects including celebrity portraits, male and female nudes self-portraits, and still-life images. His most controversial work documented and examined the gay SM subculture of New York City in the late 1960s and early 1970s. There goes the algorithm's favorability of this video. Maplethorpe worked primarily in a studio, and almost exclusively in black and white with the exception of some of his later work and his vinyl exhibit, New Colors. His body of work features a wide range of subjects, and the greater part of his work is on erotic imagery. He would refer to some of his own work as poor with the aim of arousing the viewer. His erotic art explored a wide range of subjects, depicting the BDSM subculture of New York in the 1970s, portrayals of black male and classical to female bodybuilders. One of the black models he worked with regularly was Derek Cross, whose pose for the self-titled image in 1983 has been compared to the Farnese Hercules. Maplethorpe was a participant observer for much of his erotic photography, participating in the act which he was photographing and engaging his models although other subjects included flowers, especially orchids, calla lilies. As the game mentions throughout his brief career, Maplethorpe repeatedly turned to flowers as one of his favorite subjects. Hold up. And now, you might be saying to yourself, in what conceivable reality would you have any good reason to be explaining this to me, and why is it even considered a video game? The Compact Disc Interactive CDI, later CD-I, is a digital optical disc data storage format that was mostly developed and marketed by Dutch company Philips. It was created as an extension of CDDA and CD-ROM and specified in the Green Book, co-developed by Philips and Sony to combine audio, text, and graphics, with the two companies initially expected to impact the education and training, point of sale, and home entertainment markets, but the CDI eventually became known for its video games, if you can even call them that. It wasn't really supposed to be marketed or thought of as a video game console, rather an interactive CD system, which is why gamers accustomed to what we would consider typical video game consoles and their titles would be interacting with something that feels so sterile and static. A good perspective to approach this from, especially if you plan on going through yourself, is that of a viewer in an art gallery. When you're there, you're supposed to take in the art in a way that's applicable to your understanding of the world and yourself based on informational content you've collected throughout your life, maybe gaining a more thorough understanding of yourself and the cosmos in doing so. According to Museum of Fine Arts in Houston, the four-step process is to quote, one, look, take time to look at the work of art. Two, describe, talk about what you see in the work of art. Three, think, interpret and assign meaning to the work of art. Four, connect, relate to what you see in your own life or to other works of art or images you have seen, unquote. Or if you want more steps, according to Park West Gallery, it's quote, spend time with art, determine the basics, notice your eye movements, do some homework, analyze how you feel, find your likes and dislikes, draw on your memory and figure out the meaning." Unquote. This game isn't designed to overcome a challenge or solve something like other typical video games, but it's like LSD Dream Emulator in that it's more of an observational gallery of light game, featuring artistic creativity that lets viewers gain insight into what's being presented to them through contemplative thinking. It's less abstract than 21 The World because it depicts something tangible and that can be based in reality unless the image is heavily altered and or taken in a way that seems unreal. In Rose from 1989, the guy Gnosium is so distinguished from the stem, and its leaves suggesting the continuation of life and fortification by the life that's come before it. The way the petals exuberantly blossom out from the center illustrates the passion and progression of growing any of the living soul experiences through the course of their lives, with a passion and direction of growing towards the light. In a similar light, Orchid, from 1997, displays an orchid with petals protruding out of the main flower, only illuminated by a thin ray of light amidst a dark blue background. I think it displays the uncertainty and diversification of light that comes with the indecisive decision that can often stray us off a certain selected path, the variability in the course of all our lives. Tulips from 1989 features a group of tulips coming out from what looks like a corn husk slightly draped ponderously over a table casting a shadow over the fabric of the cloth right under a sharp line between a cream color and a dark radiant. This was one of the harder photographs to interpret, but the conclusion I've came to as of us writing this is it speaks 
speaks to the looming woe in our lives. Every association with negative emotions being capable of hitting us right at the drop of a hat, and we as individuals having to mediate a balance between everything we find pleasant and everything we find unpleasant, like a shadow cast behind us all the time, an abyss of darkness looming over us. Flowers from 1982 shows, I guess, flowers. I don't know, I'm not a botanist. Blossoming out of a bottle-like vase with light from what's presumably a window cast against a pink wall. One of the more realistic looking photos in the catalog, I think it presents subtle messages about souls from different backgrounds, and maybe families if you want to get more specific, going on their diverging paths in life after a crucial developmental period. Like a lot of other photos in Maplethorpe's collection, the background contrasts dark against light, suggesting the path adventured in drastically different ways. Two Two Vases with Flower from 1985, wow he's getting so much more original with these titles, features two vases with red droplet formations in each of them, and one has one thin flower stretching thinly at an almost 90 degree angle over the other vase yet again against a black white gradient background. One of the coolest pictures from the collection in my opinion. I think it speaks to me about the human condition of needing to over dominate and exert hierarchical constructs against one another, forbidding equality and corrupting ourselves in doing so. There are so many more pictures of Maplethorpe's flowers I could analyze for the sake of explicating how they come off as interesting to me, but I feel like it would take away from the mystique surrounding someone's work when one goes to look at it. Maplethorpe's art from the genesis of his career up to today has had an immaculately resounding impact on the art world and human expression via photography due to his resounding and status quo defying methods. I doubt the majority of gamers would even know how to handle a digital project like this, but it isn't hard once you've got the controls mastered and you know how to properly browse the catalog and examine the art. So I say go out into the world and interpret some art, because you might discover something fascinating on the course of your journey.